Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com for all your vacation needs. Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com Have her book your magical vacation today. To a Weeby Geeks Network Podcast. The Dining at Disney Podcast. The Dining at Disney Podcast. You know the thing about good food? It brings folks together from all walks of life. Your ultimate source for the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resort. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen and Bubba are your guides on this culinary adventure. People are going to line up for miles around just to get a taste of my food. Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice as it relates to Disney dining. Try the gray stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. From quick service to fine dining, you'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Let's do this thing! The Dining at Disney Podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Welcome to another episode of the Dining at Disney podcast, your ultimate source for delicious discussion about dining at Disney World and Disneyland. I am your host, travel guru and foodie, Kristen, and with me is former cast member and future Club 33 member, Bubba. How are you doing, Bub? Hi, I am super. Thanks for asking. (laughs) I'm good. No, I'm good. Real good. Well, today's discussion is going to be about, um, I know we've talked recently a lot about Disneyland stuff. So this episode, we're going to be talking about two new stories having to do with Disney World. And then we are also going to be answering a listener question. So let's go ahead and dig right into the first new story. And that is that the polite pig has now opened in Disney Springs. It opened on Monday, April 10th. Uh, It features modern barbecue and beers on tap as well. Uh, It has a nice menu of barbecued items. Everything from a smoked chicken salad to the Southern Pig, which is a pulled pork uh, sandwich with applesaw mustard sauce and duke's mayo uh you can even get uh from the smoker uh half a chicken with the citrus rub brisket with the coffee rub pork shoulder with the polite rub wild salmon with a maple mustard glaze and st louis ribs with layla's sweet rub now if you order something that's that's classified uh from the smoker um, that is going to include one of their many delicious sides that they have. So some of these sides are like a tomato and watermelon salad, barbecue cauliflower, smoked corn, mac and cheese, sweet potato tots. So they've got some some pretty delicious nice. things on this on this menu. And the prices range anywhere from because they've got snacks as well. So like their barbecue pork cracklins is the least expensive thing on the menu at five dollars, and it's served with spicy vinegar. Or your most expensive uh, menu item is going to be from the smoker, and it's the St. Louis ribs at nineteen. So I mean, it's these are really good prices. They have a sauce bar. There's seven different sauces you can choose from. Mm-hmm. Anything wow. from a vinegar-based sauce to a sweet sauce, a mustard and vinegar-based barbecue ranch. And then if you like something hot, they have hot sauces as well, including a hot honey. And I'm going to tell you, if you are a bourbon drinker, this is going to be your place to go because they have a bourbon bar that has also uh, rye and reserves on it. And there's more than 50 and they even do some flights. Um, in order to do that, you'll just want to ask the bartender what you know what's available for a flight. But the menu looks amazing to me. Like I cannot wait to try this stuff. Um, I did email them and ask 
if they accepted the dining plan, if there was annual pass holder discounts, or if they accepted Tables in Wonderland. And the response was yes to the Disney dining plan. They do offer a 10% discount for Walt Disney World annual pass holders. Nice. And at this time, they are not taking Tables in Wonderland. So, uh, can't beat that. I mean, that's 10% for an annual pass holder. I will take it. I like getting Disney discounts. <laughs> yes. And then um, my second story that I'm going to talk about, which this was re-released not too um, a little while ago, but not too long ago. Um, and of course, none of this is open yet. So uh, I'm looking forward to the preview that is coming up for it. But Pandora, the world of Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be having next month the preview for annual pass holders. So I'll be checking that out. And of course, these two places are on my list. Satuli Canteen and of course, Pongu Pongu. And uh, officially... Pandora is opening to the public on May 27th. So it's going to be crazy busy. Uh, Satali Canteen is, has a nice story behind it. Um, just like everything else Disney, Disney does. I mean, there's a, a great backstory to the restaurant. Um, you know, it, part of it is that it was a main mess hall for the resource development administration. Um, and it was located in the Valley of Moara. I hope I'm saying that right. I still have yet to see this movie. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, oh, wow. I know. It's like yeah. three hours long. And I do not sit well through through movies. Like, that's why Disney animation is perfect for me. It's a nice hour and a half. Well, technically, it's computer animation. But, I mean. Well, now, yeah. Now they're doing it. But, uh, you know, yeah, there's going to be like I don't even know how many movies. I'm hearing six more movies about Avatar. Oh my gosh! I guess. <laughs> I figure I'll I'll try and watch it before then. Um, partially because, you know, I when I went to Universal and checked out Harry Potter, I felt like I was in the movie and it was super cool. So I figure mm, yes. I'll watch it. It might take me a couple of days to do it, but I'll I'll. I'll truck through it. <laughs> uh, but this restaurant is going to be open for lunch and dinner, and you'll be able to customize your meals here. And it's really focusing on healthy food. So you'll have wholesome grains, fresh veggies, and hearty proteins. Um, one of the things is they're going to have like a base of quinoa or vegetable salad um, that you can get. And uh, you will add your protein to it. And then, of course, your topping so like your vinaigrette or dressing or whatever um to the top of that they're also going to have steamed what they're calling steam pods and what these are are uh like chinese bao buns with uh, either cheeseburger or vegetable curry and they'll be served with root vegetable chips and crunchy vegetable slaw um so as you can see it's definitely going to be a, a healthier uh dining option for kids they'll have grilled chicken um, beef fish or tofu with uh, greens or rice um, and then a hot dog wrapped in parker house dough a cheese quesadilla or a cheeseburger steamed pod so healthy food all around nice now, one of the cool things is disney is trying out something new with this and it's going to be mobile ordering which means you're going to be able to pre-order and pay for your meal using the My Disney Experience app. So you'll select your menu item, customize your order, and then prepay for all of it on the app. And then when you arrive to the restaurant, you'll tap the I'm here button on it, and it'll notify the kitchen to go ahead and make your meal. And then when it's ready, you get alert to pick it up. Wow. Yeah, so. That's pretty cool. I'm wondering how far in advance you'll be able to select your food like does it have to be two hours beforehand or whatever so i'm looking forward to kind of I'm, checking that out because for I'm me sure. i can't decide days before like trying to get fast passes for me and like 60 days out i'm like i don't know which park i'm gonna want to be at that day <laughs> so yeah 
<laughs> I'm sure you would probably be able to pick your time that you want to pay. I mean, I'm sure it'll probably be like, yeah, you got to like do it at least an hour, two hours before. But if you want to pick it up at a certain time, it's just like making a reservation. Maybe just like, yeah, I'm going to, we're going to pick these up or at I mean, between six and six fifteen. You know, I'm so guessing would, it's maybe done by the day since you tell it when you're there. Yeah. That's, that'll be very interesting how they do that and then this might be a future thing for other places you know well i'll definitely be asking more questions about it when they do the preview for annual pass holders and hopefully somebody will like i'm sure somebody will have the answers to all of my questions yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah it's gonna be an awesome park i'll tell you that right now oh a little bit the jelly over here and the other addition to it is gonna be pongu pongu and I've looked this up on the web on Disney World's website, uh, and it appears that the focus is just on beverages here. Um, it does state that it's located at the corner of Wind Traders, and Wind Traders uh, apparently is a shop that's there. Um, Pangu Pangu translates to party party in the Navi language. So apparently this is going to be a lively place. It's supposed to feature a bioluminescent frozen cocktail and indigenous beers. So there will also be something sweet for guests to enjoy. Um, from the image, I assumed it looks an awful lot like a crepe is what the, um, the sweet treat that they're kind of showing there for that. Um, again, kind of hard to tell, but that's what it kind of looks like to me. I can't wait to actually see what's on this menu. And I'm hoping all of that is available for the annual pass holders to check out because I know when they did the new Fantasyland preview, we were able to enjoy the dining options that were there. So you could go into Gaston's Tavern and get like LeFou's Brew, or you could go and, um, of course, it was like walk up only, um, be our guest. So you walk, we walked up and were able to try that. And I've only been able since it's been open to dine there one other time. So I was glad that I got to dine there um, back when it was, you know, preview time only. So, yeah. but when it comes to news, that's really all I've got. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, nothing out of Disneyland really right now. So we got just the food and wine festival still going on for the next week. And kind of a dead silence after that just waiting for new attractions to open and spring break to get over with <laughs> and i'm sure by the time we actually launch this particular podcast it might actually it'll be after the uh end of uh the foodie line unless they decide to extend it no nah, i think yeah that it should have been it should have ended the 16th <laughs> it ends easter day yeah i believe so yeah Okay, so listener question. You've got one for us. Yes. So this is uh, from listener Jason, and he had a question. Uh, he just wanted to get our opinions about it. So he says, I have been to Disney. I haven't been to Disney World yet, but I do go to Disneyland a few times a year. I was wondering what type of restaurant do you prefer? A quick grab and go type thing or a more relaxed restaurant? I'm debating with myself between the two. I think both have their advantages, but wanted to hear what you two had to say or what your thoughts were and what type uh, do you like more? Thank you. Maybe you can answer this on your show. So you do, you, Jason, you do come to Disneyland a couple times a year, you know, a few, I would think we have any time between uh, maybe three to six visits a year. Um, with that, I would always try to go for a more relaxed restaurant. If you're, not at the park um, as much. So you want to get that whole Disney atmosphere going. You know, with the quick and grab, it's it's great. You can grab something, go wait in line for an attraction or something like that. But when it comes to, you know, dining, you have to dine at Disney. I mean, what what better way to get your Disney experience going than, you know, you got your attractions, you got your shows and stuff, but it's food. It's all about food and how that environment is. I mean, over at Disney World, the dream for people is to go to be our guest, <laughs> you know, and try to get that reservation to go there. That would be my dream. If I go there, that's what I want to do. At Disneyland, you want to make a reservation for somewhere that, you know, if you got to look at your budget, first of all, um, do you want 
somewhere like the Blue Bayou, which has the best best environment whatsoever. You you know, but you are gonna pay for what you get. And like I said, it's the best environment you could money could buy. You're right there in um, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. You can see people uh riding the boats on the attraction. You got the water right there, nice dark setting, candle lit, um, you know, and you know, the best service you could possibly think of when it comes to that. Uh and it is very relaxed. That's probably one of the most relaxed settings you could possibly get at Disneyland by you because it's not too loud you know kids will be fine there um, and it's just so smooth and calming you know during your dinner especially you know you know dinner for two um, it's it's very romantic but um, you know it all it, you're if you want to go ride attractions and stuff you're gonna have to do the grab and go but um that's not something that I would recommend if you just only go a few times a year. You know, you do it once in a while, but you have to make at least one time, you know, sit down and relax somewhere and eat. Whether you're in the French Quarter in New Orleans Square listening to a jazz band or you go over to um, California Adventures inside Carte Circle and enjoy the setting and the, you know, everything that's around there it's it's very relaxing it's very nice too the food's always great um and uh just try to do that restaurant um you know thing when it goes when it comes to disney and see i'm i'm kind of torn because for the most part i do i do both when i am at disney mm -hmm. um either disneyland or disney world um often you know, I like to have one of my meals be something that is sit down, relax, that kind of thing. Because, you know, we when we go to the parks, we go and we go most of the day. So it's nice to kind of when a lot of families like to kind of take a break and head out of the park and, and maybe go back to their hotel and take a swim or take a nap or whatever we don't do that so for us dining kind of gives us that where we can sit down relax for like an hour hour and a half maybe two hours depending on what restaurant we're in are we drinking you know what <laughs> what's going on um and just kind of sit back and relax but i also at times there's things that you really want to do and at that point counter service is nice and i'll say Disneyland definitely has the better counter service options over Disney World. Oh. Um, but there are some excellent places to sit down and have a quick meal, you know. Um, it's, you know, back in the day when you would get the soft ticket, you know, the paper tickets uh, <laughs> for yeah. fast passes, you know, you had to go to the place and get it. So often what we would do is, you know, you have two attractions right by each other and you get the fast pass for one, ride the other, then eat some lunch and then catch, you know, Soren, for example, you know, ride living with the land, eat at yeah. the restaurant that's in the pavilion, which is amazing there. It's a sunshine season. They have a lot of healthy options, tasty options. And then we would hop in on Soren and ride it. So, you know, we usually don't do two table service meals a day. We usually yeah. do a one quick service and one table service. Um, and like I said, we use the table service. That's kind of like our our break in the day. It's our way to sit down, relax, eat, take it leisurely. Um, the times that we don't do that are going to be when there's some kind of special uh, event going on. So like... Uh, Disney California Ventures Food and Wine. Um, now that Epcot's got three different times that it's doing food food booths, you know, when, when we're going to be doing that, hopping from booth to booth to booth, that's a snack day. We're not even going to sit down usually and have a quick service meal. We're definitely not going to sit down and have a table service meal. We're just going to snack our way around around the world showcase at, at Epcot yeah. and just enjoy that. You know, we, we did, but we did do breakfast cause we did breakfast at California. Um, no, um, Carnation, Carnation cafe. Yes, we did. 
we did breakfast there. And then later in the day, after we spent time in, in the parks, we then went and did some, some snacking over at DCA. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to do like, you know, your one in one basically, because with that, you know, sit down restaurant, you can also plan more stuff for the day. Oh, okay. After this, what do we want to do? You know, let's make a plan. You have that time to relax and figure out what, you know, what's going to happen for the rest of the day. You know, with us having breakfast, we could basically plan our day, you know, like, okay, let's go do this first, this for once we, because we planned, you know, at when we have carnation, oh, we'll do all the pirate stuff after we're done. We'll go to DCA and we'll start over here and we'll work our way down. You know, it's also a good time to recuperate and plan the rest of your day out. You know, if something always goes awry when you're planning, you know, goes to, you know, at Disneyland, whether it's long lines or the heat or something like that. So you always like to replan things, which is another great reason to sit down at a restaurant. And see, so depending on which park you're in, too, it depends on how many options you have of quick service to get out of the heat and sun and to get into some air conditioning. Yes. Um, Hollywood Studios is awful for that. I mean, most of the restaurants have always been for quick service, something that's not, not air conditioned. So for somebody like me who easily gets overheated then you know in that park i definitely have to have a table service place that i can go in and sit down and, and cool down you know rehydrate get some food and before i get back out in in the heat because i mean the yeah. last thing you want to have when it's when it's hot is, you know, to get overheated and end up with like heat exhaustion or something oh, like yeah. that. that is a good way to ruin your vacation. Um, and unfortunately, as often as I go to Disney, I usually have at least once a year where I'm there and I just end up being out in the sun for too long and get overheated. And, you know, that point then it's okay. That, that, that's like, let's sit in a table service restaurant let's take our time eating, you know, and let me rehydrate on water. Maybe we'll have a drink. Whoever's with me usually have a couple drinks yeah. and that way we can, you know, take two hours or so for me to like my body to reacclimate to yes. not being overheated. So, so yeah. And, and then it's also too, if you're going multiple days, you know, maybe one day just do, uh, you know, quick, you know, counter service or just, you know, something quick for the day, um, you know, and then the next day you could maybe plan two reservations, you know, one for breakfast, one for dinner, and you kind of get the best of both worlds when you do the multi-day. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say, you know, yeah, I prefer one over the other because it really just depends on, on the day, what park, how, how busy are things, you know, can... Do, and, uh, do I need a dining reservation? You know, you know, when I plan a last minute trip, I often don't book dining till, you know, maybe I'll book something when I get there. Just kind of, yeah. kind of depends. And it depends on if you have any favorites too at the park, you know, maybe you want, oh, we got to go have some fried chicken over at the plaza or you got to have a Monte Cristo over at uh, Cafe Orleans. You know, some people have a lot of favorites that they want to choose from. Oh, yeah. And some of those favorites yeah. are ones that go quickly. Like one of my yeah. favorites is Beer Garden. And it's because of the way the seating is set up in the restaurant, it's a lot easier to get a table there because you're not going to have two people sitting at a four top, you know, which it guards in yeah. most restaurants. Um, everything is done on benches and it all of those tables, most of them accommodate eight guests. So you're going to be sitting next to people just like you would if you were in a German beer garden that you don't know at all. And I'll tell you, you meet some interesting people I've met because um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite places to eat. But I also like that I get to meet new people. We've met people from places that, you know, I've lived or Al John's lived before or people that, you know, live just miles away from us. I mean, it's, you know crazy i mean we've met people that lived like a town over from us and stuff like that while we've been there so um and and people are you know i would say 99 percent of the time that i've done that the people have been friendly and nice and fun i've we've only ever had one time when 
and I've been going, we've been going there since 06, I think something like that. Maybe, maybe it was 03, but, um, but I'll tell you, we've only had one time where the people just wanted to just kind of sit there and they didn't even talk to each other. <laughs> so you don't know if they were fighting or what, but the other people that they <laughs> we talked to, so that was all good. <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I can't, so, and I can't think of a, I'm trying to, you know, very tough question, you know, it's, cause it's, you can go 50, 50 on it. Like I said, though, if you're doing the one day, you're just there for the day, you must play you must get a restaurant reservation or sit down and enjoy the you know enjoy the surroundings you know that you have around you every place has a different type of setting you know whether you're in Rancho del Zocalo you know which is kind of like a counter service but you know you're right there by the you know and Thunder Mountain, you know, you get all them sounds right there you can hear the shots going off over at the gun range right there next door or if you want to go to Cafe Orleans and you just hear a jazz band or, you know, just um, the train going by, which I can't wait for it to open back up in Disneyland. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, it's been so long since I rode that. And um, the pizza port where it's kind of loud because every, you know, you don't mind the loudness because everybody's getting off Thunder Mountain um, or, you know, getting on it. They're getting all excited that they're getting on it and stuff like that. Um, depending on your what setting you want but like you said you want a relaxed setting so you know choose the more relaxed places that you want which is in my opinion blue bayou cafe orleans um are and uh the french quarter which are very relaxing places to sit at absolutely take take in yeah. take in all of the sights and sounds or as many people like to say it's time to stop and smell the roses. Let's smell the roses. Yes. Or smell the Disney food. Well, thank you so much for sending us that question, Jason. Yes. Um, yeah. Guys, we always tell you, you have any questions or comments, anything, definitely hit us up via email at podcast at com. We love to get questions um, to help you guys plan your trips and things like that, too. So. Do you have anything else, Bubba? Uh, no, nothing at the moment right now. Just uh, waiting for, like you said, you're waiting for Pandora to open. Over here, we're waiting for Guardians to open, which both open the same day. You know, it looks super cool too. It does. A lot of people are disappointed, but you know what? I think it looks amazing. I can't wait for it. They're already ride testing it. I'm sure they're going to have previews for it before, just like they're doing with Pandora. So, and then hopefully there'll be some uh, Marvel themed foods uh, that weekend that it opens. Something and like see, that. this is one of the things that I think people should be thinking about who are disappointed with the change of it being Guardians of the Galaxy, is that could just be the door opening to the rest of that whole little area getting themed out to be Marvel. Because I've been thinking, Disney yeah. World can't have it, you guys can. Yes. I think you guys can do uh, some Guardian stuff, I believe. That's, yeah, which there's, I think, it's very, like, it's... Uh, you know, you're just you're treading that line of, you know, what can you have, what can't you have. I know there's a lot of stuff you can't have, but Guardians, luckily, is one of the things you guys can do. And, uh, you know, hopefully something will... We'll come out of that for you guys. But as for us, we're going to take it all. We're going to take every Marvel thing we can think of and put it in a park, hopefully, or, you know, type of land right there in California Adventures and see what the future holds after Star Wars land is or whatever complete. it's going to be is, is complete. Because, yeah, that'll be the next step, hopefully. Very cool. Well, thanks so much, guys, for downloading the show. We are part of the We Be Geeks Network, which means you can find us on iTunes, stream us on Stitcher, as well as watch us on YouTube. Just search for the Dining at Disney uh, YouTube channel. Again, be sure to like and subscribe to our feeds, share it with your friends. And if you would, please give us a five-star rating and review. We would absolutely love that from you guys.
Um, mm -hmm. If you're looking to support the show, you can do that by clicking on one of our affiliate links like Jelly Belly, Disney Store, or Garden Grocer, picking up one of our eBooks or one of our friend's books that are on there. Um, we've got a couple from uh, Disney by the Numbers, Tony Castelnova, as well as WDW Park Hoppers. Uh, John, his book is on there too. It's a bucket list book super cool so uh definitely check those out and you can also support us on patreon by donating as little as you want you can donate a dollar to us if you'd like um that just helps us you know make the show even better for you guys uh bubba tell everybody where they can find you they can find me on twitter and instagram big underscore bubba underscore b um, like I said, we were talking about Guardians earlier. I posted footage of how the attraction looks on the outside, you know, so you can get all that. I'll try to post the latest stuff as I can. And you can also see this guy right here on my Instagram who won't leave me alone right now. Oh, <laughs> I know. It's so I cute. Post pictures of this guy right or this little girl right here. So, you know, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, big underscore Bubba underscore B. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't want to see a cute little kitty cat? I know, and she loves Star Wars, too. I was trying to watch Rogue One the other day, and she jumps right in front of the screen as soon as it starts because she knows it's Star Wars. And <laughs> stayed, yeah, and she actually stayed in the room the whole time I was watching it. <laughs> see, and that is a cool cat right there. Star Wars fan cat. <laughs> as far as dining at Disney, you can find us at dining at Disney.com and all social medias. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Periscope. Um, if you have any questions, as we mentioned earlier, comments, concerns, whatever you would like, you can always email Bubba and I at podcast at dining at Disney.com. Until next time, thanks so much for tuning in and listening to our show. Bon appetit. Thank you.